welcome everyone to the T.W. Oliver Memorial College Gymnasium on the campus of the Pago Panthers here tonight where we'll be bringing you the semifinal action of the Class A 15th Regional Tournament. Tonight's first game we'll be bringing you will be Johns Creek will be taking on Pago and of course the second game be Paintsville taking on Wheelwright. Johns Creek, Pago game, Johns Creek comes in with a record of 14 and 5, Pago comes in with a record of 9 and 7. Give you just a brief rundown on here what uh, what each of these teams has done so far in order to reach the semifinals. Uh, Johns Creek uh, defeated Allen Central 75 to 58. Johns Creek defeated Millard 66 to 59, which put them in semifinal action. Pikeville has taken on Feds Creek so far. They got a first round by and so did Feds Creek. They beat Feds Creek in overtime 79 to 70. So that brings us to the first game of tonight's action. And of course the second Second round action. Paintsville got a bye. Elkhorn City defeated McDowell 72 to 41. And last night they was a mild upset over Elkhorn City, which won the 15th Regional All A last year, 62 to 52. And Wheelwright beat Phelps 75 to 47, and then defeated Mullins last night by a score of 58 to 55. So that set up the two matchups for tonight. First of all, Adam, Johns Creek and Pike, well, I think they played before, and I think, uh, I'm not sure, but I think Pike will beat them earlier in the year, but this uh, Johns Creek team's a much improving team. Yeah, uh, this is uh, definitely a county rivalry. Uh, Johns Creek Pike for uh, always a fast-paced game. Uh, should be pretty exciting to watch. A lot of three-pointers, I'd say, will be taken by Johns Creek, and I'd say right now it might be the key to Johns Creek's success. I haven't got to watch them, but I know they have good three-point shooting, so, uh, they're hitting three-pointers tonight. Pop might be in trouble. Well, I thought Allen Central was going to uh, be one of the top contenders in, in this tournament. And of course, Johns Creek beat a fine Allen Central team in the first round. And uh, Chris Lyon, Coach Eugene Lyon's son, he hit about three or four baskets in a row and just kept uh, Allen Central at bay. And of course, the uh, Taylor boys, Fields, and uh, Sean Thacker done a real good job uh, on that game uh, that night. Yeah, he did, and uh, again, this Johns Creek team's pretty powerful, but then again, if you look over at Pipeville, uh, their record really doesn't speak for the kind of uh, talent they got on this team. Uh, J.P. Bayer is leading them. I just got a little stat on it. Let's see. He's leading them with 18 points. Uh, then he got Tyrone Mullins with 13. They got even scores. Uh, their whole team averages, and yeah, their whole starting five, I believe, about double figures. So. Uh, Anybody from Pipeville could do it on a given night. Well, of course, you know, there's a whole lot of these teams has played in a lot of tournaments. A whole lot of them went out the first round. Pipeville come uh, come back and they played a uh, good Feds Creek team. They beat Feds Creek, I think, 77 to 7, 70 in overtime. And uh, they, there's not a whole lot of these teams has played a lot of ball games here lately. So from here on out, they're going to be playing two or maybe three games a week up until the first of March. Well, I'm, uh, this is uh, getting down to crunch time, and teams trying to prepare for the tournament. And uh, this, this right here is uh, is something they'd like to get either team that's in this right now. Uh, it'd be a great accomplishment to win this uh, Class A tournament. Okay, once again, uh, we're going to be back, hopefully, with some interviews of the coaches. Uh, I'm P.D. Gearhart, along with Adam Gearhart, Brian Campbell on the camera. Uh, we'll be back in just a little bit. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Stay in the game with a bundle from Gearhart Broadband. Catch all the action with Gearhart Streaming TV. Tons of sports channels, plus cloud DVR to watch games on your schedule. Track your teams and stream video highlights with internet speeds up to one gig and plume Wi-Fi. Plus, talk sports all you want with next-gen digital phones, unlimited local and long-distance calling. Get the winning combination. Call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great bundle offer. Once again, to T.W. Oliver Memorial Gymnasium at Pikeville, where we've got a little bit of time here be, uh, before the both teams are out on the floors, and we're going to try to get some interviews, as we told you there earlier. I want to give you a rundown on the playback of these uh, WPRG games. Uh, of course, tonight, uh, if you've tuned in, uh, tuning in on this game, you can stay tuned immediately following this game for the Wheelwright and Paintsville contest. And then probably about 1130 tonight, we'll be bringing you the Shelby Valley McGolfin County game. 
So three big ball games on WPRG tonight. And then once again, tomorrow night at one o'clock, we'll be bringing you Shelby Valley and McGoffin County. After that game at 3 p.m., it'll be Pikeville versus Johns Creek. And then at 4.30, it'll be Wheelwright versus Paintsville. 6 p.m. tomorrow night, it'll be the Pikeville College homecoming, which we're gonna have both boys and girls, or men's women, as you may. Uh, both those games will be on. And then at 10.30 tomorrow night, we will have the championship game of this All-A 15th Regional Classic. All those games are going to be brought to you on Channel 5 WPRG, so stay tuned, watch your crawl there, or, or uh, give us a call down there, and we'll be glad to give you an update on when these games will be played back. So once again, tonight's first contest, Johns Creek versus Pikeville will be uh, coming up here pretty soon, and uh, we're anticipating some interviews, so we'll take a break, and we'll be back with our first interview. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. With winter upon us, you can count on Gearheart Broadband to keep your home connected. Gearheart TV connects you to a world of entertainment with great digital features, DVR, and lots of HD channels. High-speed internet connects you to the web faster than ever. And next-gen digital phone connects friends and family for less. If you don't have all three connections yet, it's a great time to bundle up for the winter. Call our friendly customer service team and start saving today with Gearheart Broadband. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm down on courtside with Coach Kevin Garris of the Popful Panthers. And, and uh, Coach, I got a chance to see a little bit of that game the other night. Uh, beat Feds Creek in overtime, I believe it was 79 to 70. Uh, coming into the night's game, you got a tough team, Johns Creek. What might be some of the preparations that you uh, you uh, did for Johns Creek? And, and Johns Creek kind of hot to later. What are you going to do to stop them? Well, we went over, we played them a week ago this past Tuesday, and uh, we got beat six over there, which I thought, you know, at, uh, at the point in time, some of the calls were, I'm not going to complain about it, but, uh, you know, we're just going to try to play our game. Uh, JP got in foul trouble, fouled out. We had two other starters foul out that night, and I just think Wednesday night, we weren't mentally prepared. Uh, anytime you go into a tournament against a team that doesn't have a very good record, you, you're not really ready to play. But uh, I think tonight you'll see a different ball club. What kind of defensive preparations might you bring out against Johns Creek? Johns Creek, uh, a good three-point shooting team. Uh, maybe are you going to bring any, out any full-court pressure, or what are you going to do against the three? Well, that's all we're going to do. We're going to play man-to-man full-court, and then we're just going to play man-to-man in the half-court as well. And I think uh, uh, the amount of pressure you apply full-court, you have to apply the same amount of pressure in the half-court. And our half-court defense is uh, starting to become pretty solid right now. It, you know, and, uh, a big win over Buckhorn and a big win over uh, Williamson back to back, and I think it was all because of our defense. Well, uh, the season's starting to get down there at that crunch time and stuff. Uh, what, what, what would a win in this tournament, in this Class A tournament, uh, what would it do for this Pipe team? I mean, uh, to win this tournament. I think it would bring us a whole lot closer together as a team, which right now we're starting to come together. Uh, you know, every kid has played in every game, the top eight, and I think, you know, we're starting to learn each other. We're starting to learn our roles, and everybody's starting to play together, and we're sharing the ball more. But I think any time you win a tournament, it brings you a whole lot closer, and I think it would mean more this year to this team because we're so young and inexperienced. One more uh, quick question. Uh, the remainder of the season, uh, what are you? I guess you'll probably have a pretty good lot of games starting to play. Uh, most teams starting to play three or four games a week. Uh, got a pretty tough schedule until district tournament. Uh, we've got nine games left after the All A, and uh, we've got four at home and five on the road. And we play three games a couple of weeks. In the last two weeks of the season, we play two games a week to get ready for the district. But I think, you know, right now you, we've played 16 games already, and. And I think we're starting to come together, which that's the only thing you can expect after after 16 games is just that your kids learn each other, they learn the roles, and they play hard and they play well. It, you know, it's, it's hard to get them to play well, but trying to get them to play together and play hard are the big keys to any time you're trying to win. Well, Coach, good luck in tonight's game and the tournament and throughout the season. Thank Thanks for coming much. by. Coach Kevin Garris of the Pipe Panthers. Uh, I'm, we're going to take a break, and I'll try to be back with Coach Eugene Lyons of the uh, Johns Creek Bearcats. So uh, keep it right here on WPRG TV 5. As we start a fresh new year, it's a great time for a home Wi-Fi upgrade. For wireless devices, your internet's only as fast as your Wi-Fi. 
And with so many screens and gadgets, you need all the speed you can get. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers plume adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home with no slow zones. Get maximum performance from our super fast, reliable speeds. Contact Gearheart Broadband and add plume Wi-Fi for a great new year. Okay, I'm back on court. Side again now. I have with me uh, Coach Eugene Lyons of the Johns Creek Bearcats, and uh, Coach uh, team comes in tonight at 14 and five record, uh, starting to get on the hot streak here of late. Uh, what's your team done to to improve its play so much here lately? Well, I just think all the kids got healthy. Uh, it seemed like all year we've had one or two that's been hurt some way or the other. And right now, all in pretty good shape except for the Thacker. Uh, against Allen Central Monday night, Sean Thacker, starting center, he bruised his leg, and it seems a lot better today than what it was Wednesday night. But that, I think that's the main thing. It's just where we've got everybody back healthy or almost healthy. Let's speak a little bit about that Allen Central game. Allen Central won top teams in the region, in my mind. Uh, uh, what, what, what did you do against them to to uh, give them such a beat, I guess you'd say, you uh, have them pretty easily. Well, I think what it was, uh, they're so big and they're a little slow about getting on the perimeter. And we just more or less passed the ball inside, played an inside-outside game. We passed inside and let the big boys come in, then pass the ball on the perimeter and let the guys hit the shot. That's basically what we did. Well, uh, moving on into the Knights game against the Popple Panthers, uh, always a big rival for you, I guess. And, uh, of course, this, this is a big tournament game. I know you won it off the bat. What some of the preparations you might have done against Popple for, for tonight's game? Well, uh, we played Popple last week over Johns Creek. We ended up beating them six. And uh, we, anytime you play Popple, whether it's now or two weeks from now, you have to control the pressure their defense puts out. They rely to score a lot on their defense. And that's what Popple is known for for the last two or three years. And that's what we have to contend with this night. If we can control the pressure that they'll put towards us on defense, I think we can beat them. Well, uh, are, are you going to come out tonight's game? Uh, I know, you, know you're running. The Popple team runs too. Uh, you think you can outrun them? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's hard to say right now. We'll try to run for a while. We may try to slow the ball down. Uh, it just depends on how the flow of the game is going. Okay, one more question. I, coach, I asked Coach uh, Kevin Garris about his pop team. Uh, what, what, what would this mean for Johns Creek to come out uh, and win this uh, Class A tournament down here in the 15th region? Why, it's great. You know, Johns Creek's never been to a state tournament of any kind. And that's what we're shooting for is it's class A right now. Go to Rep Arena and play. That's all seem like all the kids and all the people of John Street's talking about. But we're going to give it our best shot. Well, Coach, good luck, and thanks for coming out and talking Bye. to me. Again, that was Coach Eugene Lyons of the Johns Creek Bearcats. I'm going to send it back up to you, Dad, and uh, we'll get on the way here tonight. Okay, thank you, Adam. And once again, we'd like to thank uh, Coach Kevin Garris of the Pipewell Panthers and also Coach Eugene Lyons of the Johns Creek Bearcats for coming out and giving us a pregame interview here tonight where uh, the uh, tension is uh, getting tough here tonight for this first contest. And like you said, Pipewell would like to repeat. They went to the Class A state tournament year before last. And, of course, Elkhorn City went last year, and they've already... Uh, been eliminated in this tournament and uh, what a big thrill it would be for Johns Creek to go like you heard uh, coach Eugene Lyons say uh, they have never been to any kind of state tournament uh, at Johns Creek and uh, they would sure love to go of course the boys would love to go and play from Rupp Arena and of course the fans would like to follow them down there so we still got a little bit of time left before uh, the starting introductions for both teams we'll take a break and we'll be back with more this is WPRG TV 5 Sports our family relies on the internet every day. We both work from home at times, so our Wi-Fi just has to be there. We learn with it, laugh with it, and count on it for all kinds of things in our home. Your family depends on strong internet and Wi-Fi. That's why Gearhart Broadband provides fast internet speeds and plume whole home Wi-Fi to meet your needs every day. To learn more about our internet and Wi-Fi choices, visit Gearhart Broadband online. Once again, uh, I'm going to 
make a few comments here and get a few uh, clues on what you thought both coaches had to say down there. I know that Kevin Garris was talking about went over in uh, at Johns Creek here last week and Johns Creek defeated them. I think what uh, Coach uh, Eugene Lyons said was six points. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Pat will beat them earlier in the season. So this may be the uh, best two out of three contest here. I believe they have already played two games and they split them. And, and this not here should be different. This should go right down the water. I, I'm pretty excited to watch this game. It should be a, a running gun type game, uh, fast pace and, and pretty physical. Well, it ain't going to be no uh, slow down ball tonight. And I sure don't think. Adam, while we've got this time, let, we've got a few new sponsors tonight. Let me run a, run these sponsors down. We've got the uh, East Kentucky Water. Uh, package patch cards and gift Maynard's insurance Johns Creek Drug Center and of course Brooks Pharmacy Williamson Williamson Memorial Hospital Lane Brothers Ford the Citizens Bank Rogers self-serve Delta Supply and the Floyd County Board of Education we would uh, like to uh, thank those sponsors for helping us out bring you all or the semifinals and the finals of this all-a tournament So once again, you can watch these games tonight. If you're tuning in on this game and watching this one, you can stay tuned immediately following this one for the Wheelwright Paintsville game. And then about 11.30, it'll be Shelby Valley versus McGoffin County, so stay tuned. For the beginning of the semifinals of the 1993 15th Region All A Classic. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for our invocation to be given this evening by the Reverend Bob Norman, the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church at Shelby Anna, Kentucky. Reverend Norman. Let's bow for prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, it's good to have the opportunity to be here tonight. It's good to be able to enjoy ourselves, to leave the cares, dear Father, of the world behind for a little while. It's good to be able to support our schools and our communities. We thank you so much, dear Father, for showing your love to us in countless ways. Help us, dear Father, to occupy our time by measuring and counting all the ways you love us and care for us. Bless each one that participates, whether they be player, coach, fan, or whatever. And we pray we may honor you by all we do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Would you remain standing and give your attention to the flag located above mid-court. Place your right hand on your heart as a symbol of your faith and as we honor America with the performance of our national anthem by Pikeville High School faculty member Morgan Chapman.
about two minutes and ticking to down to tonight's first contest, and we would like to uh, uh, thank our PA man, Randy Jones, who does a fine job down there, and uh, you never know when they're going to take off down there, Adam, so we just get on here and talk until they get started, and we kind of let them take over, and we'll go back down there to him in just a minute. Him as being Randy Jones once again for the starting introductions to both teams. Adam, a good crowd you're on hand, and uh, I think <laughs> there's a lot of them just like us are anticipating a good basketball contest here tonight. Well, both teams have good supporters. They have uh, the games I've watched either team play, they always have a big crowd, but this seems to be a little bit bigger, and I'm sure about halftime of this game, it should be a packed house. Of course, the second game paints for and will ride. Uh, both of them should have good followings, too, and I'd love to have a good night of basketball here in Pike County. Well, you know, this uh, Class A tournament was developed for just such uh, such dreams as uh, Johns Creek uh, Coach Eugene Lines was talking about for his team to go to the state tournament. What honor that would be for them. And uh, also another team, of course, uh, Will Wright, small school, and uh, Paintsville's too. Paintsville's had the privilege of going there a few years ago, a few years in a row. And, uh, of course, they're, they're, them and their fans know what it's all about. And... Uh, I'm sure that Pikeville does too, but Johns Creek and, and Will Wright's been, but it's been a little while. But it, I think uh, Johns Creek has to be the Cinderella team in this tournament so far. I'd have to say too, uh, it's been the talk around around this gym. I've talked to several different people tonight. They seem to think that Johns Creek is sort of the favorite in, in uh, this tournament. And, and just like Eugene Lyons said, the coach of Johns Creek, uh, they never have been to a, a state tournament. So this could be a good chance for them. And, and this will be their last, one of their last chances. Of course, they'll have the regional chance, but this is for the Class A. All right, let's go back down to Randy Jones. Of semi-final action in the All-A 15th Region Classic. The team to be shown as the guest on the scoreboard, the Pikeville Panthers. At forward, a 6'3 senior, number 34, J.P. Blair. At forward, a 6'4 junior, number 25, Steven Kreitzer. At center, a 6'2 junior, number 35, Dustin Wallace. At guard, a 6 one senior, number 24, Tyrone Mullins. And at guard, a 5'3 junior, Ted J.I. Joplin. The head coach of the Panthers, Kevin Garris. Now let's meet the Johns Creek Bearcats. At guard, a 5'9", senior number three, Jason A. Taylor. At guard, a 6'1", junior number 40, Gary Fields. At center, a 6'4", senior number 20, Chad Lyons. At forward, a 6'2", senior number 14, Jason K. Taylor. And at forward, a 6'2 senior, number 30, Sean Thacker. The head coach of the Bearcats, Eugene Lyons. Okay, so there you have it. First for Pike with J.P. J.P. Blair, Tyrone Mullen, Stephen Kreitzer, J.I. Joplin, and Dustin Wallen. And for Johns Creek, you have Jason A. Taylor, Chad Lyons, Jason K. Taylor, Gary Fields, and Sean Thacker. Once again, I'm P.D. Gearhart, along with Adam Gearhart, Brian Campbell on the camera. We'll be bringing you tonight's game. I'll be a filling in for the color. I'll send it over to Adam. Send it over to Adam for the play-by-play. -play. So we're about ready to get this contest underway, Adam. So we'll swing it over to you, brother. Okay, that'll be Chad Lyons, number 20 for Johns Creek, jumping up against Popwell's Tyrone Mullins. And we're about ready to get started in some exciting basketball. This is semifinal action, and the tip is controlled by Johns Creek's Thacker. Johns Creek 
Just coming out, working against that tough man-to-man -to -man pressure of the Pop Panthers again. Coach Gary said that they're going to come out full court right off the bat, man-to-man. -man. So they'll be dogging Johns Creek. And on the shot by number 40, Gary Fields, he gets fouled. Foul's going to be on number 24, Tyrone Mullins. So Johns Creek comes out, takes it straight to the basket. I was playing a little bit of sticky defense right there, Adam. I think we're going to see a whole lot of that here tonight. I'm sure his pop will team, well, both teams look to be in good shape. Johns Creek might even come out in a little full court pressure of their own right off the bat. As the first free throw by Fields is good, he'll have one more. And he hits both and puts Johns Creek the first two points of the game. Here's Joplin for Popper. He gives over the corner to Wallen, back to Joplin. Johns Creek in 2-3 zone, and they find underneath. Mullins open. He misses the layup, and underneath there'll be a foul. I believe that foul's going to go against Johns Creek, and that's going to be Sean Thacker. So that's going to be his first personal foul. Popper inbound under their own basket. That'll be J.P. Blair bringing it in. He tries to bring it in. Nice steal by Jason K. Taylor. Both Taylors on this Johns Creek team has good defense. Well, all players that they have out there, both teams really good defensive playing teams. Here's a shot by Lines. No good. And Joplin rebounds. Pop will push him up the floor quickly. Joplin over to Wallen, back out to Mullins. Right to the They'll get him with the walk. He's sure will. I've seen him do that a number of times this year. Uh, this shuffles his feet before he gets started. And you're on the other end. I'm sure that wasn't a shot that uh, Chad Lines was wanting to take. Uh, he just went up nowhere to go. He goes in there and posts up and let him get to him, get him the ball. He's hard to handle in there. When he when he gets it down low and starts uh, pounding them in from down there, that kind of opens him up from outside, too. And, and he's, he's a pretty good shooter from outside. Well, he's got J.P. Blair on him, and uh, I'm sure they'd like to have a few fouls on him. And here's a foul at the top of the circle while Jason A. Taylor was driving to the basket. That was going to be on J.I. Joplin. That's going to be his first team second. Jason A. Taylor inbounded on the sideline. Again, Johns Creek up two to nothing here early in this first quarter. Fields, he works against Mullins. Goes over to Jason A. Taylor. Taylor drives the baseline. He gets back out to Jason K. Taylor. And his shot no good. Tip by lines no good. And Blair on the rebound. Out to Kreitzer. And Kreitzer almost got his pass stolen. It gets to Wallen. His shot no good. And a foul underneath. Foul's going to be on Chad Lines. That's going to be his first team second. So John Streak had the ball there a couple times. I thought that Chad Lyons should have brought the ball down and put it back up instead of trying to tip it there the last time down the court. But he elected to tip it the ball and uh, paid off for Pitler. Here's the inbounds pass to Wall and his three-point shot no good. And Thacker pulls the bound. Again, uh, Pitler the last couple times down the court, they've got two or three shots at it. It's not affected John Streak to this point, but they need to cut that out. Here's lines underneath on the move. He gets foul. That's just what we was talking about. He got a foul on J.P. Blair. Uh, gets the ball down under like that and posts up. Goes toward the basket. That's uh, hard to handle. He made the shot, but he fouled him on the floor before he got there. So John Creek could take the ball in and the home basket. And the ball comes in the fields. Fields. Tries to take it in the factory and nice defense by Wallen of Popwell. Quickly, Popwell back up the court. Joplin takes it underneath. First layup, not even close. And Thacker once again gets a rebound. Johns Creek out on the run. Jason A. Taylor out to Jason K. Taylor. Over the fields. And they find line open underneath. Good play, good play. Puts it in. Credit That's what they're looking for right there. He posted up well that time. He got his man, J.P. Byer, uh, in front of him. Here's a three-point shot. No good by Joplin. Pop will cold to this point. John Creek is controlling the board so far, too. And oh, another, another foul. foul. Yeah, the 
foul on J.P. Blair, so that'll be his second. Team's fourth, so it's just what we talked about, Adam. They get Chad Lambs the ball, and uh, J.P. Blair is having a hard time of controlling him right now. That was a little bit of a picky foul there, though. It was. Uh, he drove on Blair two times in a row, and both times he picked up the foul. Uh, Blair just a little over aggressive. Into the game for Blair, that'd be number 24, or excuse me, number 23. John Coates. Okay, 23, John Coates. Here's a shot, no good, and it goes out of bounds to the Popsville Panthers. I think that uh, Jason K. Taylor was pretty lucky that time with not getting a foul called on him. He went over the back, and they didn't call it. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Johns Creek up 4 to nothing. Here's Kreitzer from the corner. His shot, no good. Jason K. Taylor with the rebound. Here comes Fields. He gives a cross to Taylor and to Lines. Lines, first shot, no good. His second shot, no good. And on the struggle for a rebound, they're going to get a pop with foul. I'm not sure who that's going to be on. I believe it's going to be on Wallen. Let's see if we can pick it up. It is going to be on number 35, so that's Dustin Wallen's first personal foul. Team's fifth. I, tell you, I see something right off the bat. Pop was going to have to control better than what they have is letting lines get underneath like he has. It, it's, it's hurt him to this point. He's just getting it in there with ease, and, and he's making his move and drawing the foul. First shot by lines is good. It's a five to nothing. Johns Creek lead. And his second one's a little hard, but Fields rebounds. Out to lines at the top of the key. His shot no good. And Joplin back on the attack. He drives all the way to the basket and gets fouled in the process. Foul's going to be on Gary Fields. That's going to be his first. Team's third. I'm not sure if he was uh, in the act of shooting or not. Looks like he was. G.I. Yeah, Joplin will go to the line to shoot two. Adam, a whole lot of action here to score five points. Still uh, quite a bit of time remaining in the first quarter. Pablo a little cold from the field right now. Uh, of course, they haven't scored yet. And also from the free throw line. First shot by Joplin, no good. Well, more than a little bit cold so far, aren't I'm telling you. That one wasn't even close. Second shot by Joplin's good, so he splits the free throws and puts Pop on the board. Here's that full court pressure that Coach Garris was talking about. And Johns Creek had no problem that time getting it up the court. Here's a pass oh, in the fields, and he gets fouled. I don't know if that was in act to shooting or not. We'll have to wait and see. Number 24, looks like. Tyrone Mullins. It's going to be his second, team sixth. Back into the game for Pop with J.P. Blair. He replaces Wallen. Johns Creek inbounds under their own basket, comes in the factory. He gets it rejected out. And Joplin drives it all the way up the court. Oh, what a block. Heck of a block by Lyons. Pass oh. from Thacker down to Jason A. Taylor, and he lays it up and in. Well, he was, was waiting, on play that, waiting on that one. And that's got the Johns Creek crowd fired up over there. Johns Creek got the momentum oh, right now. It's a pass. Pieces. Just goes right through the hands of Joplin. Yeah, he win. Johns Creek up 7-1 and uh, really fired up right now. So Coach Kevin Garris wants a timeout. 3.56 remaining in the first quarter. John's Creek's out on top, seven to one. We'll take a break and we'll be back. This is WPRG TV Five Sports. It's been a tough year, and Gearheart Broadband is here to help by providing the affordable connectivity program to qualifying customers. While the allotted federal funds last, if anyone in your household meets one of these eligibility criteria, Gearheart Broadband may be able to reduce your current broadband bill by up to thirty dollars a month. To find out if you qualify or to apply, visit imctv.com slash ACP. Gearheart Broadband. Better broadband means better lives. Uh, all the momentum here early going. Back 
people having a hard time of finding the buckets. Uh, they've took, taken several shots and they haven't scored a field, uh, free throw. Field goal yet. One free throw is what I was trying to say. So, oh. a little bit of uh, coach shooting right now again. No, John's Creek, you got to credit them. They play good hustle on defense. So, Hop uh, has got a little work to do. You can definitely tell John's Creek fired up for this ball game if they don't run out of gas before it's over with. But they definitely got her to the floor right now. No doubt. It's 3.56 remaining in the first quarter. John's Creek is up 7 to 1. Here's Taylor. He's driving to the baseline. Nothing going. Gives the lines, lines, drives. Out to Fields, back to lines, in to Thacker. Thacker makes a move, fakes. Good move. Goes up, and he shot a little short. He made a good fake that time. He had the right idea, but just couldn't get his shot high enough. That was a good move. Let's see who the foul was on. Foul's going to be on Sean Thacker. That's going to be his second, team's fourth. So he made a good move, had a good shot, missed it, but he committed the foul. Joplin pushes across the timeline for the Panthers. He goes over to Mullins. Over the Crouch to Mullins. Mullins tries a long three-point shot. No good. And let's see, they say it tips the touch of uh, tips the top of the backboard, so it'll go to Johns Creek. Into the game for Johns Creek. Let's see, I'll be number 34. That is Keith Hatfield. Joplin, Garden, Taylor closely. Here's a pass inside the lines. His spin move and shot, no good. Again, Joplin pushed it quickly up the court. Tries to get it over to Mullins. Mullins loses the handle, gives out to Coates. Coates drive to the basket, shot, no good. And Johns Creek back on the attack end, just like we thought. Fast paced game. Boy, we like it. No doubt. Lines from outside, not even close. And Coates pushes it out to Blair. Blair, he's yet to score. Goes up and banks it in. Kind of an awkward looking shot, but he, he got to go, and that's the main thing. Seven to three, Johns Creek in the lead. First quarter action here at the semifinal game of this all A classic. Lines takes a shot, no good, and on the rebound, it'll be a Johns Creek foul. Now it's going to be on Keith Hatfield. That's going to be his first and team's fifth. So Chad Lines getting a few good shots uh, last couple times down the floor, just wouldn't go in. Well, that time I had him double teamed on the shot. He might have forced a little bit, but but he he had the shot there. And he's done the right thing. He tried to bank it off the backboard. So. Just didn't call for it. Here's Coates. He drives the baseline. Drives in our wide open. Another impressive block by Lines, but J.P. Blair was right there to put it back up and in. Pipes cut the lead to two at seven to five. One fifty-eight remaining in the first quarter. And Pipes from another defensive steal. Joplin. He drives, pulls up for a short 10-foot shot, and makes it, and nods it at seven. So Pop will start to warm up a little bit. Joplin puts some nice defense on Taylor. Got a little greedy on that as he reach in. Foul's going to be number two on J.I. Joplin, and uh, Adam seemed like to me that they would get Chad Lyons uh, down under the goal like they did starting out and see if he can draw another foul on J.P. Blair. He's got two on him, but they elect to, uh, he's, he's out the top of the key and wanting to handle the ball. I, I don't understand must just be the rotation of their offense, but I see the point you got. Uh, uh, if I was coach lines, I'd be wanting to take it at J.P. Blair too. Uh, getting that third foul here in the first half would really hurt Pop. First shot by Jason A. Taylor is good. He'll have one more free throw. Hey, the crowd really starting to pour in now. He hits the second one also and puts Johns Creek out by two. Coates on the other end drives to the basket. His shot no good and Jason K. Taylor pulls the rebound. 
Fields of the John Street Bearcats pushes it up the court. He gives over to Lines. Lines. Shot from free throw line. No good. And Joplin. Joplin's got a few rebounds for Pop from tonight. He pushes it down in the paint and draws the foul. Foul's going to be on Gary Fields. That's going to be his second. Team sixth. Tell you what, this is a hostile crowd over here on Pop beside of all of them standing up the whole game. Uh, really giving their team some support. They're loud enough, I know. Well, I like to see that. I hope they don't turn the press booth over. <laughs> it's a rockiness up here, ain't it? Yeah. Here's the inbounds pass to Kreitzer. His shot, no good. Good defense that time by Johns Creek. Taylor finds wide open underneath Hatfield. And Kreitzer comes with some nice defense, knocks it out of bounds. Been some impressive blocks out here. Tonight. I'll tell you what, they're letting them play in there, and I like that part of it. Not calling too many, too many little peck fell. It's definitely been, been physical, just like Coach Dyer said it'd be. Here's a John's Creek turnover. Nice defense that time by the new player in the lineup for Cottle, Shannon Blackburn. I think John's Creek come out and made that big run and made a big spurt and they're laying back on their heels a little bit right now. Here's a shot out of the corner by Kreitzer as an ball. And Jason K. Taylor rebounds. Johns Creek has 30 seconds remaining in this first quarter. They do have a two-point lead, 9-7. Uh, for as fast-paced game, it's just been uh, not much scoring here in the first half. I mean, first quarter. Neither team's uh, shooting a very good percentage. Blackburn giving Fields some trouble, but he gets it out of there. Down to 10 seconds. And that'll be a foul outside. With eight seconds remaining in the first period. That was going to be on number four. That's going to be Shannon Blackburn. That's going to be his first team seventh. So that will put uh, Gary Fields on the free throw line to, uh, to shoot the bonus. Into the game for the Panthers making his first appearance tonight. Number 12, John Blair. And this is Fields. He has a bonus. And he missed it. Pop with the chance to score the last bucket of this quarter. Up to Blair. His shot out of the corner, no good. Kreitzer on the rebound, and they, let's see, they count it. So credit, Kreitzer is standing right with it. As so, the first quarter action expires. And that'll leave it tied up nine to nine. So Adam, let's just keep it right here just for a minute. Watch these cheerleaders down on the floor. Seems like to me, just like we talked about earlier, John Street come out and uh, they they like a house call there for just a little bit. And then when they got the big lead, the uh, Pitewell called the timeout and seemed like the momentum kind of shifted over to uh, over to Pitewell. Pop will start getting some runs, run outs on John's Creek and start getting some easy buckets. Uh, I, think, I don't know. Uh, both teams seem to be a little tight to me the first quarter. I think you'll see that uh, Chad Lines will start posting up a little bit more down underneath uh, against J.P. Blair and see if he can get one more foul on him. He's already got two. If he can get another foul on him, take him out, and uh, that would hurt Pitewell somewhat. Well, they, at the start of the game, they did that, but like you said, they, they started having him up at the top of the key and and uh, I don't know about that strategy. Okay, I know that uh, both teams are bound to have a uh, different strategy here. Of course, they need to shoot a little bit better percentage than what they uh, shot the first quarter. So with the second quarter action, we'll get it back over to you, eh? The Pop Bowl has the first possession of the second quarter. Joplin takes over to Mullins. Mullins stops and pops. Shot no good. And Pop Bowl had four or five fillers around there for the rebound. And Blair misses a shot. And look here, <laughs> Lil Joplin, uh, nice defense that time. He saved the Johns Creek run out. They had a man wide open down the court. Blair, they're going to get him with the wall. Well, I'll tell you what, J.I. Joplin's all over the place that time. He is. He's, he's a quick one out there. Two men couldn't have guarded him that position. 
again, top with that full court pressure. This is Mullins against Fields. Fields pushes it across the timeline and sets his Johns Creek Bearcat team up. Taylor over to Hatfield. Back out there to Jason K. Taylor. Inside it goes to Fields. He's open in there and he scores and draws the foul. He'll step to the line for one shot. I believe that foul is going to be on number 225. Adam. Let's see. It is. That's going to be Stephen Crater, and that's going to be his first. So Gary Fields will go to the line to try to complete, complete the three-point play. We've got to talking about Chad Lines. Uh, Adam, uh, I think uh, Coach Lines is giving him a rest on the bench over there right now. Well, uh, they, they went to our stretch, though. They, they took it inside the fields that time. It worked. And he got a three-point play out of it and pushed Johns Creek out by three at 12 to nine. Joplin shot blocked. And there's Hatfield coming out with it. That's about four block shots for Johns Creek so far in this contest. So they're playing real good defense. Taylor gives out. Back again. Well, they had Packer in there. Still got him in there. He's posting hard down there against us. While they got him, while they still got him in there. He's posting real hard in there against Waller. John's Creek just taking their time right now. Right there, got him right there. Hatfield, he drives in the paint. His shot, no good, and it goes out of bounds to the Panthers. Now they had him on several occasions that time. I believe Coach Lyons is uh, hollering at him, telling him to get in there to him. Back into the game for Potwell, John Coates, number 23. Sean Thacker was definitely working hard down there. He wanted it. 6-15 remaining in the first half. Again, John's Creek out by three. Crafts are out to Coates. And Mullins gives over in the corner to Wallen. Wallen shot no good. Blair got the ball stripped on the rebound and a fight for it underneath. And that's going to be a jump ball possession arrow to John's Creek. J.P. Blair come down with the ball at him and, and uh, put it behind his head and uh, one of the Black Cat or one of the Bar Cat players blocked it while he had it behind his head. Well, he did the right thing by keeping it up above his head, but he just took, he took it too far behind his head, though. Taylor working against Coates. He tells his team to spread out. They want to get in there to Thacker, and they that do. That's exactly what they're doing. And he scores easily. That time he just told all the other players to get on the other side of the court to want Thacker to post up on the block, and it worked. Mullins in the corner to Kreitzer. Kreitzer across court to Coates. Over to Wallen. Wallen's shot no good. He's missed several from there tonight. He can't seem to find the touch. Kreitzer's pass deflected. And nice hustle by Taylor. And oh, he gets elbowed boy. hard, but no call. Maybe a busted lip on that. Mullins over to Kreitzer. Kreitzer drives. And that foul might have been a little picky that time. Foul's going to be on Sean Thacker, and that's going to be his third. So I tell you what, this game is intense out there. Yeah, we got the same kind of crowd. We can't see them for this air conditioner uh, event here, Adam. We got the same kind of crowd over on the other side for John Street as we do over here for Bible. So both student bodies definitely want this contest. They want this class A tournament. Always a big thing to win. Get good recognition for it on through the season. I'm sure uh, any any remaining teams in this is, is going to be playing hard tonight. First shot by Kreitzer is good. Pop will finally get in double digits at 10. 14 to 10 to score. Kreitzer will have one more free throw shot. Second shot by Kreitzer is also good, and he cuts it to a three-point Johns Creek lead. Taylor pushes it up the court, and he gets fouled. It's going to be foul number three on J.I. Joplin, so 
Jay Joplin with three for Pikeville and Sean Thacker for with three for Johns Creek. Yeah, that's in Jason A. Taylor to the line to shoot the bonus. So into the game for Johns Creek will be number 34 Hatfield. Also into the game for Pikeville will be number four Shannon Blackburn. That'll be Jason A. Taylor at the free throw line. He has a bonus attempt. And he hits the first, so he'll be awarded the bonus. 5.03 remaining in the first half. Second shot also good. And he pushed Johns Creek back out by five. Blackburn, he gets over to Mark. They say a kickball. He'll remain with Popper, though. Slowed down a little bit the pace of the, this contest. I just didn't think they was going to be able to keep up that kind of pace the way they started out, but it slowed down somewhat. It has, uh, say so both teams are tired right now. Both of them playing full court pressure, and, and it's just been going back down the court, but, but their team can seem to get it, get it going on the scoring end of things. Hot was John Coates. He drives, pulls up for the jump shot. Good. Nice looking jump shot that time by Coates. Got it over Chad Lyons. Here's Fields. He gets over in the corner to Lyons. Lyons drives and puts in the bank oh, shot. Tell you what, Lyons just now just paid him back. That was nicely executed that time. Coates on the other end drives and scores again. Two straight buckets for him. He's going to pick up. <laughs> 18 to 15. Sean's Creek in the lead. Lines all the way down the basket. And uh, he might have charged that time, no call. And a long pass down court. It's number 24 Mullins is over his head back to Johns Creek. Pipe on that full court pressure. Really has an effect to Johns Creek. I don't believe they've got a turnover off of it tonight. Making them work hard, though. Four minutes remaining in the first half. Johns Creek lines. Works in the middle and gets the ball stripped. He'll remain with Johns Creek. I noticed that Stephen Kratzer is on uh, Chad Lines now instead of J.P. Blair. So I want to take probably a, a wise move. Third foul on him. Inbounds past the fields. Fields drives in the paint. Pulls up for a five-foot jump shot. Good. Mullins down the court quickly for the Panthers. Pulls up for a ten-foot jump shot. No good. Kratzer gets offensive rebound. Drives. Puts up a shot of his own and makes it. That's a 360 jump shot right there. He bumped his way in there and uh, stuck it in the hoop. Good looking shot. 2017, Johns Creek in the lead. Taylor working against back when he pulls up for a three point shot. Oh. And just bombed the bottom of the net that time. Good three point shooter he is. Kreitzer on the other end, tries another shot from the corner, no good. Blair with the offensive rebound and put back. That's what Blair does good for this Pipewell team. He seems to always be there to get the rebound and put it back in. Lines on the other end, his shot no good, and Pipewell with a chance to cut into that lead even more. Coates gives over to Blair. Blair's gonna try a three-point shot, no good. And Jason K. Taylor pulls down the rebound. Fields gives over to Taylor, and Taylor will set things up for Johns Creek. So they got lines posting up down there, and now he comes out and sets a pick. Here's a three point shot by Taylor, no good this time, and a foul on the rebound. That's going to be on Jason K. Taylor. That's going to be his first. And let's see who that's going to send to the free. Looks like it's going to be J.P. Blair on the free throw line on the other end. Looked like, looked like that last time they had Chad Lyons open and uh, 
just didn't hit him with the pass. But they had him posted. He had one-on-one -on -one situation down there. They didn't give it in to him. He went out and set the pick. I guess it was designed for Taylor to get off a three-pointer as number 34 Hatfield lane violation. So I give J.P. Blair another chance. Uh, he hit one down here in the opposite corner, but that one just wasn't foul for him. Blair will have one more. Excuse me. That hurt too because he missed it. Second shot by Blair is also no good, so poor free throw shooting this first half by the Panthers. Well, they're three for five. I did, did not know that. They must have. That was the first two, I guess, that they missed. Here. Hatfield. Gives out to Lyons. Lyons tries a three-point shot. Good. Jan Lyons with his first three-pointer of the night. Pushes Josh Creek out by seven. It's the biggest lead, I believe, of the night. Mullins drives the baseline and draws a foul. I believe that's going to be on Gary Fields. We'll see if it's number 40. It's going to be his third personal foul. Back into the game, Kreitzer for Potler. I want to remind all of our viewing audience after tonight, tonight's second game, as Will Wright taking on Paintsville. I'll be a good game, I believe. You got a special guest coming to join you for that game, don't you? Yeah, going to have Pete Grigsby Jr. here helping me with that second game, and always glad to have Pete here with us. Pete's a talker now, eh? He's a good basketball man. Talk a little bit. He uh, knows about it, though. He knows a lot about it. Absolutely. He's been to the state tournament three times as head coach, so he knows his thing, knows his game. Well, there's two missed free throws by Mullins, and he goes to Johns Creek. This powerful crowd really into it right now. Johns Creek having troubles getting it up the court, but they get it to Hatfield. Lines. Tried to jump shot, he lost it, but it goes off the right player. That was a break right there for John Street. He just lost it. Went off one of the Pipers players. Taylor really inbounded under his own basket. He brings it in to Jason K. Taylor. It goes around the horn, Jason A. Taylor. And a new player in the game for John's Creek. See, that'll be number what, 24, Darrell Ratliff. They tried to take it inside this time to Lyons, and nice defense in there by Wallens. Good to know. Shot on the other end, no good by Blair. And a fight for the rebound, and let's see, they're going to have a foul. Don't know so much about that one, Adam. Foul's going to be on Keith Hadfield. Look like good defensive. Good defense up by Keith Hatfield, but they got him with the, the whistle right at the last instant. So that'll put John Blair on the free throw line. Blair played tall. Well, he is the tallest player out there. I don't know what to list. He's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Misses the front end of the bonus, but tipped up and in. Let's see who they cut that with. Tyrone Mullins. Mullins with the tip in. Again, pop one full court pressure this time. It's 2-2-1, two, two, but once again, John Street gets it across the timeline with these. 40 seconds remaining in the first half. John Street has a five-point lead. They may work it down for the last shot of the half. Lines. He gives a fake and drives to the basket. Tries to pass it over to Ratliff, but gets it stolen. Coates on the other end. Goes up for the shot. And draws the foul. He'll step to the line for two shots. Foul's going to be on Jason K. Taylor. That's going to be his second personal foul. So I believe that uh, Chad Lyons took it to the hoop a little too soon for Coach Eugene Lyons locking. And a big break for Pipewell there. That's going to give him a chance to, to go in at halftime in a little better shape uh, when Johns Creek could have worked it down. 
and got that last shot. Mullins, free throw no good. And now maybe my, my saying about Pop will shoot some poor free throws is coming true now. John Coates. Hey, it's on the free throw line. Oh, okay. Yep. Second shot by Coates. Also no good, so. I believe you're right. A little bit cold now. I just seen a little bit in the future a few minutes ago, I guess. Ten seconds remaining. Johns Creek's Taylor works against Mullins. He's having some problems out there. He gets out to Taylor. Taylor with a long three-point shot at the buzzer. No good as the first half of action comes to an end. With Johns Creek on top, 26 to 21, we'll take a break and we'll be back for some halftime uh, activities. We'll be bringing you the stats here and maybe an interview. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Stay in the game with a bundle from Gearheart Broadband. Catch all the action with Gearheart Streaming TV. Tons of sports channels, plus cloud DVR to watch games on your schedule. Track your teams and stream video highlights with internet speeds up to one gig and plume Wi-Fi. Plus, talk sports all you want with next-gen digital phones, unlimited local and long-distance calling. Get the winning combination. Call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great bundle offer. With winter upon us, you can count on Gearheart Broadband to keep your home connected. Gearheart TV connects you to a world of entertainment with great digital features, DVR, and lots of HD channels. High-speed internet connects you to the web faster than ever. And next-gen digital phone connects friends and family for less. If you don't have all three connections yet, it's a great time to bundle up for the winter. Call our friendly customer service team and start saving today with Gearheart Broadband. As we start a fresh new year, it's a great time for a home Wi-Fi upgrade. For wireless devices, your internet's only as fast as your Wi-Fi. And with so many screens and gadgets, you need all the speed you can get. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home with no slow zones. Get maximum performance from our super fast, reliable speeds. Contact Gearheart Broadband and add Plume Wi-Fi for a great new year. Sports editor, the Appalachian News Express. Rick, first of all, what do you think about tonight's contest and what we look forward to in the second half action? I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's getting interesting out here. You know, they've caught a lot of fouls. These two teams played a couple of weeks ago over there at Judge Creek. And, then, uh, you know, a lot of people said that it was a pretty rough game. I think these officials are going to make sure it doesn't get too rough out right here. They caught 21 fouls in the first half of play. I think that's going to be a key, you know, what happens for the rest of the game. Who can hold up, who's, not, who's in foul trouble, and who's not in foul trouble. It'll be interesting to see. Well, I think once again, you know, it's who can hold up to this kind of run, and they're running up and down the floor. I thought Johns Creek would have been well advised to uh, post up Chad Lyons down here underneath and try to get him the ball. Other than that, he's, he's taking it up top again, trying to drive the middle. Yeah, that's interesting, too, that you mentioned that, that, that they have had him driving the basket, and that's what he's been what he's been doing. Maybe they're doing that trying to keep him from going over the back on the fouls. I don't know. But uh, whatever they're doing, it's working right now. They've got a little lead here at the half. Well, the first two times he done that, he got he got a foul on J.P. Blair, and they haven't done it too often since then. But anyway, I'm sure both coaches got their strategies for the game. Now, let's go on to tomorrow. I understand you're going to be up. You're going to be with Dr. Don. You're going to do the uh, Pikeville College girls and uh, or women's and men's uh, basketball games tomorrow. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. I'm really excited about that. You know, it's a homecoming at the college. It's also the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies are going to be tomorrow. There are five people going into the Hall of Fame. That's always exciting. A doubleheader. The boys and girls are playing Lindsey Wilson. They went to Lindsey Wilson a week and a half ago and got swept down there. Now they're coming back up here. They're looking for revenge. They're going to be, uh, the games will start at 2 and 4 on Saturday, and I understand the playbacks will start at 6 o'clock on uh, Saturday night and then 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to be working with Dr. Don, as you say. And then during the girls' game, Mark Williams, all-time leading scorer in the history of Pikeville College and graduate of Johnson Central High School, he's going to do color for us. I'm looking forward to having his insight. And then when the men get started, Roy Cutright, the girls coach there, he's going to do color for us. Got a lot of insight there. Those guys know a lot more about basketball than I do. I'm just looking forward to being on, along for the ride on that. I'm very excited about doing both those games. And uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, tonight's second game. What do you see between Pikeville? 
I mean, excuse me, Paints will come in and upset Elkhorn City last night. I think everybody would have to consider that upset. And then Will Wright beat Mullins, which those teams are pretty well evenly balanced. What do you see in tonight's second contest? Well, you're right when you say that was an upset because that's still the talk of this tournament. You go out here in the lobby and stand around, people are wanting to talk about how do you think that Paints will beat Elkhorn City? Well, it doesn't matter tonight. They did, and that's all that counts. Now they come back here, they got to play Will Wright. One thing they've got to look out for is they've got to get back up. I'm sure they were up high to play Elkhorn City. Now they've got to get back up to play Will Wright because Will Wright's not going to lay down and let them have this game. Pace was probably the favorite. But I tell you what, we sit here the other night, uh, Wednesday night, we had two games. Pikeville got these two teams that won. They almost got upset that night. Then last night, Elkhorn City did get upset. So Pace has got to be ready to come in here and play because Will Wright's not going to let them just come here and take it. Obviously, Paints will probably be the favorite, but we've already found out here that means absolutely nothing in this tournament. Well, I know that uh, anything can happen in this round ball, but what an exciting uh, 15th regional all way finish it would be if Johns Creek took on Will Wright. That would be interesting, and it would also, you know, there would be a lot of people excited about that. You know, the thing about it is this is the fourth year of this tournament, and Pikeville has been in a championship game every year. They won the first two. Elkhorn City beat them in a championship last year. Really, this has been their tournament. And I, you cannot deny that. No one can deny that. This has been theirs. Johns Creek's looking to prevent them from getting back in there. They've got 16 more minutes to do it. It's going to be exciting to see what happens here. Okay, thanks, Rick. Come down talking to us, and good luck on tomorrow's games. Looking forward. Thank you, sir. Once again, Rick Bentley of the, App Rick Bentley of the Appalachian News Express. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back for second half action. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Our family relies on the internet every day. We both work from home at times, so our Wi-Fi just has to be there. We learn with it, laugh with it, and count on it for all kinds of things in our home. Your family depends on strong internet and Wi-Fi. That's why Gearhart Broadband provides fast internet speeds and plume whole home Wi-Fi to meet your needs every day. To learn more about our internet and Wi-Fi choices, visit Gearhart Broadband online. As we start a fresh new year, it's time for a Wi-Fi upgrade. For wireless devices, your internet's only as fast as your Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers fast speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Contact us today to learn more. 40 seconds remaining for the second half of action gets started here again. Johns Creek with a halftime lead, 26 to 21. I'm going to take his time right quick to run down the halftime stats. We'll start with Johns Creek. They were led in scoring by Jason A. Taylor. He had nine points. Chad Lyons had eight. Jason K. Taylor started to play but did not score the first half. Gary Fields pitched in seven, and Sean Thacker pitched in two for a total of 26 six points for Johns Creek. Now for Pikeville, they were led in scoring by number 34, J.P. Burr. He had six, and also Stephen Kreitzer, he had six. Tyrone Mullins had two points. J.I. Joplin, three. John's Coat. John Coates had four points. Dustin Wallen, John Blair, and Shannon Blackburn all played, but did not score the first half. And once again, that gives you a halftime score of 26 to 21. And we're going to let time wind down here, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the start of the third period of play here at Pottville, Kentucky. Once again, halftime score, Johns Creek 26, Pottville 21. But that's, that's quite a feat getting back. It's been a tough year, and Gearheart Broadband is here to help by providing the affordable connectivity program to qualifying customers. While the allotted federal funds last, if anyone in your household meets one of these eligibility criteria, Gearheart Broadband may be able to reduce your current broadband bill by up to $30 a month. To find out if you qualify or to apply, visit imctv.com slash ACP. Gearheart Broadband. Better broadband means better lives. Back for the second half of action here. Both teams are coming out on the floor. We'll get back over to you, Adam. Okay, looks like Popple's going to have the first possession of this second half. That'll be Mullins bringing it inbounds. Popple, uh, 21 points in the first half. I'd say it's about the lowest they scored all year in the first half. Uh, really couldn't get, get their offensive flow going. So let's see what Coach Garris has instructed his team to do this second half. 
Johns Creek looks to be in a 1-3-1 zone to start things off. Waller now the corner hits. And that might be a spark for Potwa. He was very cold in the first first half from that corner, but start the second one out pretty good. Underneath, wide open, Thacker, he goes up and puts it in. Somebody lost their man that time, didn't they? Well, Thacker's wide been roaming uh, down there underneath the basket uh, the whole first half, so they finally got it to him there. Kreitzer on the baseline, shot no good. Blyer on the rebound, gets it blocked out there by Lyons. Another nice block by Chad Lyons. Oh, he's got a bunch of blocks this game. He's played a good defensive game for sure. Here's Lyons on the baseline. He drives to the basket, lays it up left-handed, no good. And Mullins tries to bring it up court, gets it stoned away. Thacker goes up and lays oh, it in. Oh, I tell you. Sean Thacker coming to play ball tonight. 30 to 23, Johns Creek has a seven-point lead. And here's another helpful turnover and another layup for Johns Creek. And that was Jason A. Taylor. So a quick spurt. Uh, here in the start of this second half has really got Popwell tore up. Well, let's just keep it right here at him. Once again, like we talked about in the, uh, the very opening of the ball game, Johns Creek come out fresh. They come out strong, and they've done the same thing to start the uh, second half of action here. Gee, yep, uh, some good defense. Uh, there's three steals in a row, and all, and, and, and all the buckets they've got uh, been right under the basket. Been layups. Layups, yeah. And Johns Creek come out red hot and Pike will once again cause timeout to try to cool them off a little bit. I know you heard uh, our interview with uh, Rick Bentley down there and uh, just don't want to take nothing away from none of these teams because but uh, what a finish it would be for Johns Creek taking on the uh, wheel ride. Yeah, it would. Uh, Floyd County team against the Pike County team and Wheelwright really a dark horse in this in this all a tournament. They got a good draw. They played some good ball up here also. Uh, they got their hands full tonight, though. I don't want to take nothing away from Pipe with their fans for either one, but uh, they've got a lot of tradition and uh, they've been that route before and uh, we're both, just talking Cinderella games. Yeah, both teams too last last year being a being a school, so uh, I guess that, that will be kind of unique. Here's Mullins out on the wing. He gives over to Kreitzer, back to Mullins. Mullins spots up for the three-point shot short. Fight for the rebound under our Wallen comes out with it. And he has it again. And, Walks, I believe. Yep. Or no, the other official caught him off, said he got fouled first, so reverse that walk call. Oh, he had a walk call rolled all over him. Sure did. He come out there. He, I, I seen it coming. Let's see who he's going to call that one on. They'll be on lines, I'd say. Who it's going to be on number one four. I think that's going to be on Jason K. Taylor. I don't know. I don't even know if he's anywhere around that one. I'm not sure who they called that one on, Adam. Well, anyways, this will be Dustin Wallen at the free throw line. He'll have two shots as he got fouled in the act of shooting. First shot by Wallen, good. Second shot, rims out, so he hits one or two. And pulls Pop will fin eight at 32 to 24. Six, 10 remaining in the third period. Fields takes over to Thacker. Thacker out to Taylor. Taylor with the jump shot. No good. Looked like he got fouled. No call. Look at that. And big Thacker underneath. I tell you what, he's played a heck of a third quarter so far. Yeah, he's muscling in there. So John Creek's 10 point lead and a near steal by Fields, but it goes out of bounds. So it remained with Potman. I'm not sure who that last foul was on. I give it to Jason K. Taylor. If it was, that was his third personal foul. So we'll have to watch that as the game progresses. Here's Joplin. He drives, fakes, goes up with the shot and scores. So he took it right down the top of Timber that time. Here's Taylor for Johns Creek. He's working against Joplin. Takes out the lines. Lines over the fields. Fields. No 
Over to Taylor. Taylor, three-point shot no good. And Taylor, a big score for Johns Creek. I don't believe he scored in tonight's game. Unless he did that. Oh. Official saved one that time. Sure has been He's another steal by Jason A. Taylor. I'm sure they'd like to see Jason K. Taylor get in the rhythm of scoring. A good three-point shooter, shooter, but he just hasn't got on the track tonight. Here's the baseline shot by Mullins, and he can knock that one down. Nice high arch shot. It's a six-point game, 34 to 28. Taylor is in a little bit of trouble. He tries to take it across the court, and he gets it over to Jason A. Taylor. His three-point shot, no good, and Blair pulls the rebound. Pushes out quick to Joplin. Joplin goes up and lays it in. Well, once again, Pat was making a run after John Street comes out hot, and Coach Eugene Lyon wants a timeout. John Street on top, 34 to 30, with 4:24 remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a break, and we'll be back. This is WPRG TV Five Sports. Our family relies on the internet every day. We both work from home at times, so our Wi-Fi just has to be there. We learn with it, laugh with it, and count on it for all kinds of things in our home. Your family depends on strong internet and Wi-Fi. That's why Gearhart Broadband provides fast internet speeds and plume whole home Wi-Fi to meet your needs every day. To learn more about our internet and Wi-Fi choices, visit Gearhart Broadband online. Back once again, Adam, for help true again. John Street comes out and makes a big spurt, and Pike will chip back. Cuts the lead back to four. One time, John Street with a 10-point lead, so up and down basketball. Quick pace. Tell you what, this might be about the biggest crowd I've seen at any event up here. We've done a lot of games from up here at Pike, a couple of different tournaments, and uh, really some enthusiasm out there tonight. They're definitely in the ball game. The Johns Creek, they come out, they have a four point lead. Hopkins made a pretty good run on here in the first quarter. Here's Lines. He takes inside the Thacker. Nice post in there by him, and he takes it up and puts it in. I'll tell you what, that's eight points, 10 points on the night for him, eight points in this third quarter, so. He's done a good job. Just can't be contained in there. He's just, like you said, muscling his way around. Here's Kreitzer underneath. He goes up, puts it in, and draws the foul. And I believe that foul is going to be on Chad Lyons, and that's his second. That'll have Kreitzer at the line. Again, he'll have one free throw shot. Highs the basket. Fires it up. It's no good. Lines rebounds. Johns Creek still at that four point lead at 36 32. 345 remaining in the third period. Fields and the Thacker. Thacker back out to Taylor. Thacker there posts again. in there again. Takes it up and banks it in. Can't be stopped. Tell you what, he's a machine in there. He's a, you a know, Charles he had Barkley that, in there. He had that a lot in the first half, but uh, they just didn't get to him. That's right, and a big defensive play there by Gary Fields. Tied up J.P. Blair, and he goes back over to the Barquettes. Seems like when Pop makes a run and, and draw, gets down to within about four, uh, Josh Creek comes right back for a little run of their own. Here's Fields. He sets his team up. They tried to take it in there. Thacker almost lost it, but they retained it. Cross court. They just spread it out. Let him get posted right up. There he is, is again. Wide open. And he goes up and gets oh. a block by Byron. Uh, Looked like a good block. Mullins on the other end drives the paint. And arches it high and gets it to drop. Well, uh, Johns Creek done what they wanted to do. They got it in to Sean Thacker and... Uh, He's been just about unstoppable, but J.P. Blair put the stop on him at last time. Uh-oh, look here at little Joplin. He's a feisty one in there, and he causes a tie, and it goes to Pottville. The 
So she's getting heated up again, Adam. Sure is. Into the game for the Johns Creek Bearcats will be number 34, Keith Hatfield. Joplin takes over to Coates. Coates fakes, moves to the basket, and gets the foul. Wasn't in the act of shooting, so uh, Pop will be inbounding. Fouls on Jason A. Taylor. That's going to be his first personal foul. Well, I guess I was mistaken. They said it was on the shot, so it looked like he was just jumping and passing it off, but they say he got fouled in the act of shooting, so he'll have two. Fouls called in uh, this contest tonight. Coach Lines over there didn't look like he was pleased with that call at all. Uh, shot by Coach. No good. He'll have one more. As you said earlier, Pat was uh, not shooting free throws very well. Well, say got fouled behind the three-point line, so he makes the second one. He'll have one more shot. And this third one is no good also, so he hits one of three, a fight for the rebound. And it'll be a foul. Going to be on J.I. Joplin, and that's going to be his fourth personal foul. So J.I. Joplin's played a good ball game. Four personal fouls on him, and uh, I'm sure Coach Kevin Garrison hate to lose him. So he, he's a spark pop with quick, but just like you said, it'd be, it'd be bad to have him out there. He, he does a lot of ball handling for him, too. Johns Creek still has the lead, 38 to 35. Here's Hatfield. He got in trouble, and they call a five second call on him back to pop. Well, he had a he had a couple of players trying to come to him, but good defensive pressure by Pikeville and uh, just couldn't get it off. So there comes Joplin out of the game. Placing him was Dustin Marlin. Two old five remaining in the third period. Things starting to heat up here at Pikeville, Kentucky. Drive to the basket by Coates. His shot no good, and Johns Creek back on the attack. Chad Lines is he is. Don't look good at all, but right there he gets the ball to the three-point line, fires it up, no good. And a long football pass down to Blair. He gets it, fakes, and scores. Nice play that time by Pop when they cut to a one-point lead. And I tell you what, Lines is in pain underneath. Johns Creek still on top, 38-37, a minute 36 remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. As we start a fresh new year, it's a great time for a home Wi-Fi upgrade. For wireless devices, your internet's only as fast as your Wi-Fi. And with so many screens and gadgets, you need all the speed you can get. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home with no slow zones. Get maximum performance from our super fast, reliable speeds. Contact Gearheart Broadband and add Plume Wi-Fi for a great new year. As we start a fresh new year, it's time for a Wi-Fi upgrade. For wireless devices, your internet's only as fast as your Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers fast speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Contact us today to learn more. Uh, pleading his case over there, Adam. I'm not sure what it's all about, but uh, uh, Chad Lines is uh, will come out of the contest. Acts like he's, he's got a band on his knee there, and uh, he looks like he's favoring that knee. So. Hopefully nothing serious. Taylor over in the corner in trouble. He gets it out to Hatfield. Hatfield drops the basket, takes it down under the factor, and they're going to get him with the charge on that. Sure will. No, oh no. They say he got fouled. Looks like he might have might have forced his way in there at time. I'm not sure. I couldn't see. Bounce pass. I don't have the focus who that foul's on. I don't have a 
Kepler himself. Taylor out on the wing. He drives, gives out to Hatfield. And Johns Creek working things around right now. They still have that one point lead. Hatfield over to Taylor. Taylor calls out play number four. Ryan Packer still working down there heavy under the basket. Hey, him and Mullen, it's Fisk one there right now. Uh, there he got they're him. dogging each other. They got him right there wide open. Wide open. I can kind of see Johns Creek strategy. They, they got, they're keeping their men outside. And it's leaving him wide open under there for a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, they're wanting to uh, give Chad Lyons a little rest over on the bench. They don't care uh, just as long as they run the clock down here in the third quarter. They don't care if they score or not. Just keep Kyle from scoring. Well, there are 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They're going to hold it for the last play. Taylor calls out to play. And he gives over to Hatfield. Hatfield up to top of the key. He gets it picked off by Bear. Bear goes up and lays it in with four seconds remaining. And time is going to expire before he gets a shot off. And that'll end the third quarter of action. And Michael takes uh, the first lead in quite a while. Michael on top, 39 to 38. Adam, let's just keep it right here. I thought that Johns Creek started their offense a little bit too soon. They started with 16 seconds uh, remaining, and of course a good play with J.P. Blair picked it off and went down, had plenty of time to go down for the layup. Well, uh, looked like a pop of Newton telegraph what they was going to do because Blair was right there, right there for the pass. And uh, he did a good job taking it all the way down and laying it up. And in. I tell you what, if John Creek has got another spurt left in him, I think we'll see it right here at the beginning of the uh, uh, fourth and final quarter of action. They've come out twice, made big runs on Pygmo, and Pygmo's just kept their composure and got back in the ball game, and uh, they've taken the lead now. back so I'm sure he'll play uh, look like he's still favoring that knee a little bit but uh, you can bet he'll give it 100% because he definitely wants this ball game. Well Johns Creek will have the first possession of this fourth and final quarter. That'll be Jason A. Taylor inbounding. And he brings it into lines and Taylor will set things up. Once again, if you just joined us, we got a barn burner on our hand. It's a one point pop will lead, 39 to 38, and it's all a semi-final game. Lines, they try to take it in there to him. He gets it stripped. Joplin down the court. He fakes, puts it up and shot no good. Kreitzer on the rebound, and he sticks it back in. So Pop Boy, you can tie since you're starting to get some momentum. Uh, he's playing some good defense right now. Out top, tries to drive to the basket and draws the foul. Foul's going to be on JP Blair. That's going to be his third personal foul. So, once again, something we talked about earlier Chad Lyons taking the ball to the basket, or he's, he's not in there posting up at him. I know that uh, Thacker's done a good job of posting up, and I thought he should have done that a little earlier. Look here. Ooh, inbound pass come in to Th Thacker. He draws the foul. He almost got the bucket to fall. Foul's going to be on Steven Kreitzer, and that's going to be his second personal foul. Team's fourth. So I think he got Sean Thacker in the act of shooting, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Thacker making his first appearance at the free throw line tonight. And his first one, no good. That's three-point lead still. Walling into the game for Popple, who places Crouchy. Packer takes his second one and it rims out. It comes out to Taylor. His shot no good, and he runs it down. Goes over the lines, lines drives to the basket and gets it stripped away by Blair. Nice defense at top by J.P. Blair. Bobble starting to 
control things right now on the defensive end. Yes. Tigers definitely got the momentum going right now. They land some good defense. They're going to hold it up and see if maybe Johns Creek will uh, choke a little bit. Just trying to wind, wind them down a little bit. They'll mark it down and get a good shot under there. Here's Joplin underneath. He gets a shot blocked by Lyons again. Lyons, I tell you what, he's a monster in our block room tonight. Uh, on that call. shot, there'll be a foul. I think they're going to call that on Sean Thacker. And if they do, and they do, and that's his fourth personal foul. So Thacker picking up his fourth personal uh, short coach. Lyons doesn't like, like that at all. Can't be as physical now underneath on the offensive end. And they can't afford to take him out either. This is Tyro Mullins at the line for Popwell. First swim's good, he'll have one more. He pushes the Panthers out to a four point lead. 42 to 38, 636 remaining. Is another one and it's also good. And Johns Creek needs to try to get something going here again. He calls out play. You see number two, it looked like. So let's see what kind of play they got in their pocket. They take it over the line. So he drives the baseline. Got cut off in there by Blair. They take it in the factory. Back to Lyons. And Lyons going to get the charge that time. Sure is. And that's a team. They didn't call it. Yeah, there it is. He's a little bit late. I believe Lyons knew it, too. Well, that's going to be foul number three and foul number four on Chad Lyons. Ooh, Johns Creek's two big men with four personal fouls. It's not good for Johns Creek at all. I will play good defense or just uh, denied him the baseline and it's not winning the bonus. Yes, let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, Pipewood. One, two, three, four. No, they're not in the bonus yet. They'll still shoot the two free throw shots. The two technical shots, and then they'll inbound on the sideline. That'll be Tyrone Mullins shooting the technical shots for Pipewood. And he's a little bit hard on his first one. Tell you what, he puts plenty of arch on that, don't he? Talked about time and time again. Pretty looking shot. He hits a second one and pop win down on the sideline. It's a pop with six point lead, 44-38. He takes it down the paint, goes up for the jump oh, shot. Oh, that's good. Well, that's what, he's done that several times. I took it right in there, Adam. Popple out to the biggest lead today, and here's a foul in backcourt. That's going to be on John Colts, and that's going to be his first personal foul. Johnson, uh, J.I. Joplin reminds me of Jason Chris from Prestonsburg taking it right in the middle and uh, in the big timber and putting it in the hole. Well, he's done a fine job at it tonight, especially on the fast breaks. Fields drives to the basket. His shot no good, and Blair rebounds. Blair running up the court, gives over to Joplin. Joplin goes up and puts it in, and Michael, uh, we're starting to get that running game down pretty good now. Looks like that uh, Johns Creek's going to take a timeout. 534 remaining in the fourth quarter. Michael goes on top, 48 to 38. Let's take a break and we'll be back. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Stay in the game with a bundle from Gearheart Broadband. Catch all the action with Gearheart Streaming TV. Tons of sports channels, plus cloud DVR to watch games on your schedule. 
Track your teams and stream video highlights with internet speeds up to one gig and Plume Wi-Fi. Plus, talk sports all you want with next-gen digital phones, unlimited local and long-distance calling. Get the winning combination. Call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great bundle offer. Then all Pitewood here this fourth and final quarter. Everything's going for Pitewood. John, John's Creek just can't get to nothing going at him. Well, Pat was just eating John's Creek up right now on the defensive end. And they're also getting the ball out quick on transition and, and scoring some really easy buckets. And John Creek will have to, they're going to have to execute a little better on the offensive end for even want to think about a win here tonight. Well, Pat was where they're eating them up at on the defensive end, and uh, they're scoring a lot of points off in their defense. Taylor gives up the package. They're working the ball around the top of the key right now. Backer underneath this guy's man posted. He gets it in there and blows the layup. And Pop will quick on the other end, and Blair will set things up. Joplin takes it in the paint, gives over a nice oh, pass. Is. I tell you what, he's he's just driving down the lane. They don't know what to do with him. They don't know if he's going to shoot or pass it off. That time, a nice assist by Joplin. As we've said before, he's off quick out there and uh, don't know what to do with him. Three-point shot by Taylor, a little long. And here's the tee on Coach Eugene Lyons. Hey, he's displeased about something right now. Well, I'm Might be that 12-point deficit he's got. Well, I'd say, yeah, I'd say that's... Uh, I can think of 12 good reasons why he's upset right now. This will be Tyrone Mullins at the free throw line again, shooting the technical shots. He'll have two shots. And the first one a little long. Basket lets the second one off, baby makes it. It's a 13 point pop for lead, 440 remaining. Hey, I would have never thought this. I, I come in here tonight thinking uh, and hearing that Johns Creek may be the favorites, but again, when you have two teams of eight, eight, two teams of uh, quality teams like these two, you're going to have a tough game. Pike Go was, either way. Pike was scored 12 points in the fourth quarter, and Johns Creek's yet to score, so after three, it was uh, Pike went on top 39 to 38, and they haven't looked back so far, so Pike was just taking it to them this fourth quarter. That burn, that's a pretty good stat. Had scored yet this fourth quarter. I didn't know what. That's definitely hurting them bad. Joplin pushing across the timeline, and he's going to set his Panther team up. And almost a good defensive play by Taylor, but he got a little aggressive on it. Jason A. Taylor, that's his second personal foul. Team's fifth. They'll send J.I. Joplin to the free throw line. Well, I had that as being team fifth, but they got him in the bonus, so evidently I must have, must have missed a few here in the heat of the action. Joplin missed the front end of the bonus. And Jason A. Taylor works it around. He takes it over to Jason K. Taylor. Fields off the pick, drives to the basket, and lays it up again. Nice play that time. That's well by Johns Creek. 51 to 40 is the score. Four minutes remaining. Joplin. And the pot will crowd right now champ we want paints for. So who's the underdog the next game I want? That time. Who was that? The underdog would have to be Will Wright, I think, in the next game. But uh, 
There's a long three point by Jason K. Taylor. I would say you're right. They'll probably be the underdogs since Pace will uh, beat Elkhorn City, more respected team in this tournament. And uh, but you can't count Will right out. Here's a steal. Outlet pass to Taylor, and he scores. Might not order to count Johns Creek out here. Still a lot of time. I'm telling you. It's eight right there. 53 to 45 to score. 3.05 to go in this game. Joplin in the corner. Has his man posted. And I believe that will be uh, Blair. He drew the foul at time. That's going to be on Sean Thacker, and that's going to be his fifth personal foul. So he's played a good ball game, Adam. Yeah, he has. Uh, four, six, three. Rolls out with 12 points. Just got a little aggressive that time on Byer. Byer uh, had him posted up pretty strong. So the J.P. Blair is taking one free throw shot tonight and missed it. Well, he'll have a bonus attempt on this one. And he makes the first. And he'll get one more. So John Creek calls timeout. 2.59 remaining in the fourth and final quarter of action. Pikeville on top, 54 to 45. We'll take a break and we'll be straight back. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Our family relies on the internet every day. We both work from home at times, so our Wi-Fi just has to be there. We learn with it, laugh with it, and count on it for all kinds of things in our home. Your family depends on strong internet and Wi-Fi. That's why Gearhart Broadband provides fast internet speeds and plume whole home Wi-Fi to meet your needs every day. To learn more about our internet and Wi-Fi choices, visit Gearhart Broadband online. Definitely got what the work cut out for. They, they finally got a few points on the board, but uh, Pike was a counter, and every time they score, Pike was coming back and, and, and countering their attack. So, Josh Creek needs to tighten the defense up a little bit for sure to get back in this game. So, 259 remaining, anything can happen. That nine point lead can be gone just in a matter of a minute. crowd something else, isn't it? I tell you, they're definitely fired up here tonight. They got a whole section over here standing up, and the, the band's doing a good job, too, uh, really keeping their fans occupied. J.P. Blair's bonus attempt is good, and he hits both, and pushes Pop out to a 10-point lead, 55 to 45. And this time, Fields loses it off his fingertips, out of bounds, back to Pop. Definitely uh, what Johns Creek didn't need right there. Joplin gives it over to Coates. And Coates passes it over to Mullins. Mullins finds Kreitzer underneath and puts it Good execution by the Panthers. Taylor on the other end. Jason A. Taylor gives that to Jason K. Taylor. He fakes and lets out a three-point bomb. No good. And Mullins rebounds. Picked off by Taylor. Hatfield on the wing. Gives over to Fields. Fields, short jump shot is good. And a long pass down court. Nice pass from Josh. Another assist. Over to Kreitzer. And, and Josh Creek just isn't getting back right now on defense at all. Pop was eight him up on that transition offense. Almost a steal by Blair. Hatfield will take a three-pointer short. Three-pointer by Jason K. Taylor, no good. And Josh Creek right now uh, sort of taking desperation shots when they have plenty of time left. Another foul on Jason A. Taylor and Adam. That's uh, this is more more like the uh, Pikeville team we've seen earlier in the year play Belfry. Uh, I don't know if this is second or third, fourth game they played earlier this year. They looked extremely well in this fourth quarter. Uh, I've seen visions of that same team that we've seen earlier in the year. So 
That will definitely get things together. Well, they've just picked this Johns Creek defense apart on the fast break, especially. Mullins misses the bonus. And Fields runs it down for Johns Creek. He pushes it up to Taylor. Taylor pulls up for the three. Or no, he elected not to. He passed over to Fields for the three. Shot no good, and Breyer pulls down the rebound. And it goes out of bounds off him, they say. So it remains with the Johns Creek Bearcats. Oh, he just lost it on the rebound that time. Here's another three-point by Johns Creek. No good. There, the other shot, no good. That's we play in the game for Johns Creek. I'll get him in a minute. Walks. And I got J.I. dropping on the wall. I see a new player in the game for Johns Creek. Big man. The number 44, Lance Bowman. 122 remaining. Pavel has a comfortable 12 point lead, 59 to 47. Another three point shot by Johns Creek. And that's all they're doing right now, and they can't make one. They're cold as they can be from out there. Another miss from outside. And Pavel rebounds. Pass deflected out of bounds that time by Jason A. Taylor. It'll remain with the Panthers. It's just a matter of time now. Back will on top 59 to 47, as you said. It looks like they're going to advance on to the championship game this Class A final. Sure does. They played an excellent second half, especially fourth quarter. Here's a foul on the Johns Creek player. Another foul by Jason A. Taylor. So, Adam, once again, you're right. Uh, Pikeville, Pikeville definitely deserves to win this ball game. They come out and uh, kept their composure throughout those runs that Johns Creek give them, and then they just more or less blew them out of the water here in the fourth quarter. That'll be J.I., or excuse me, J.P. Flyer at the free throw line. And he makes the first. 58 seconds from man, Pop. Looking good right now. Looks to be going on to the championship game. Flyer hits the second one also. Player into the game for Pop will be Dustin Wallen. Here faces JP Byron. JP's played a fine game tonight. He's he's done it all on the offense and defensive end. Here's a long three-point shot by Jason K. Taylor. They finally get one to fall, but it's a little bit too late for Johns Creek. And that'll be a Johns Creek backcourt foul. It's going to be his third personal foul. Trying to add a few of these points here as we go along, Adam. Free throw shot by Coach is good. We'll have one more shot. Sixty-two to fifty is the score. Second free throw by Coach, rims out, and Jason K. Taylor comes down with it. He drives off the pick, and takes a long three-point shot, no good. Jason A. Taylor rebounds and takes a three-point shot, no good. And Kreitzer, so he threw it off a of Johns Creek player, it'll go two five. Smart play that time by Kreitzer. Here's J.I. Joplin. He pushes it across the timeline and draws the foul. That was going to be on Gary Fields. That's going to be his fourth personal foul. Well, J.I. Joplin played a real ball game here tonight, Adam, with 11 points right now, and he's got a chance to tack on a couple more. And we want to remind all of the beauty in the audience. Tonight's second game. Will Wright taking on pace for you. You want to keep it here for that one. We're going to have uh, our guest for the second game, Pete Grigsby Jr., down on the floor for interviews of the 
both head coaches of Wheelwright and Paintsville to start the second contest. So just as soon as this contest is over, we'll give you a run down the stats and hopefully get back in time to uh, get him down there on the floor. Jopkins free throw no good. Maybe you can get Pete to get uh, Coach Garris. See what his comments are about tonight's win. Three point shot by Taylor, no good. Struggle for it underneath. And a pop will foul. Foul's gonna be on John Blair. That's gonna be his first personal foul. And that's gonna send Keith Hatfield to the line to shoot two. He's been to the line night and he hasn't scored either, so there's a chance for him to get the score books. And he does just that. 15 seconds remaining. Hatfield takes a couple of dribbles, lies the basket, and gets the second one in a row also. Long pass down court to Coates. He gets fouled quickly. To be number four on Keith Hatfield. John Colts will go to the line, and we've got a host of substitutes coming in for Pipewell. Well, Adam, let's see here. If you should have most of those, hopefully on your uh, scorebook there, we'll try to get everybody. Coach, free throw, no good. And hot ball player comes out with it. Four seconds. Three, two, shot, no good underneath. That's time expires. So Pipewell wins the first contest in this semifinal action tonight, 62. Johns Creek, 52. Adam, we'll take a break and we'll be straight back for the statistics on this game and the uh, final comments and closing so we can get set up for this uh, second game. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. With winter upon us, you can count on Gearheart Broadband to keep your home connected. Gearheart TV connects you to a world of entertainment with great digital features, DVR, and lots of HD channels. High-speed internet connects you to the web faster than ever. And next-gen digital phone connects friends and family for less. If you don't have all three connections yet, it's a great time to bundle up for the winter. Call our friendly customer service team and start saving today with Gearheart Broadband. What a game ball, uh, Adam. Uh, what a ball game. Uh, trying to get out here. We've struggled. This crowd's uh, rocked house here tonight. And, I'm uh, telling you, that I believe shook me silly up here. <laughs> we we definitely got shook, and you got credit to the crowd a little bit for bringing Popful back at last half. But they they just stuck right with it and play, played a great fourth quarter. Well, they definitely took Johns Creek out of it the first, uh, fourth quarter. So let's quickly give the uh, audience a rundown of tonight's scoring. First for Johns Creek which pushes their record to 14 and six. Jason A. Taylor with 13 points. Chad Lines with eight. Jason K. Taylor with six. Gary Fields with 11. Sean Thacker with 12. And Keith Hatfield for two for a total of 52 points. And now for Pikeville, which moves their record up to 10 and seven. J.P. Blair with 18. Tyrone Mullins with 10. Stephen Kreitzer with 14. J.I. Joplin with 11. John Coach with six. Dustin Wallen with three for a total of 62. Once again, Pike will on top, 62 to 52. Adam, closing comments? Well, all I can say is that that was, that was a good game. Uh, not really the way, it didn't turn out the way I feared it would. I feared it might be a little closer, but you just gotta credit Pike with just getting out there and busting their butts and, and they deserve to be in that championship game. Okay, stay tuned for tonight's second contest between the Paintsville Tigers and the Wheelwright Trojans. This has been Adam Gearhart, Brian Campbell on the camera. I'm P.D. Gearhart. Thanks for watching. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports.